I think in Sefer Mido, if I remember correctly, that Rabbi Nachman says that there's, there's two ways of playing music today. There's, there are ones who take it from musical notes, and there are ones that draw it down. So, music, as we learn in Torah Gimel, in different places, in Kutim Ram, Torah Nun Hey, he speaks about how it's connected to Nebuah. How the musicians would Nebuah play. is for prophecy. Prophecy, yeah. Yeah. It comes from the same place, music and Nebuah. So what, what happened was is that the musicians would play and the prophets would prophesy through the music. Ah, uh, that's right. They, 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 they often couldn't prophesy without being inspired with the music, right? Yeah. So <coughs> when you're speaking about a nigun, usually a nigun is a, is a tune without words. It's usually a haim that goes sometimes two parts, a third part that just repeats itself. And each time we get in a deeper devekut. And it's like the ladder of Avram Avinu, the dream. Yaakov Avinu. Right? Yaakov Avinu, the dream. It's the angels that are going up and down. It was all music. It was all musical notes. And the nigun is a form of the vekut. And one who marries... The vekut, uh, for those that don't speak Hebrew, what's the vekut? Uh, the vekut is like um, expanded consciousness. It's like your mind is awake, it's connected to God. It's where my heart is opened, where a person is able to speak fluently what is in his heart, which is also a, a level of prophecy. It's when our prayers are fluent in our mouths. And through this comes the nigun, which is usually a lot of the Hasidish nigunim, the, a lot of the tzaddikim who merited to draw down nigunim, don't have words, but the words can always be added to it like the helium, words that sometimes are fit into the vessel of the nigun. So the nigun is a vessel. And then you can add words, you can just hime it. You know, and one of the beautiful things is that it can have as many voices as possible if you've ever been to a tish before. Like when the Rebbe gives a tish, you see thousands of Hasidim singing a nigun, and it's, 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 it's pure devekut, which is expanded consciousness. And what comes first, the prayer, prophecy, or the nigun? Prayer or prophecy? I mean, I, th I believe it's kind of the same thing, you know, because the, I think the nigun, I believe the nigun is a prayer. It's a, it's a form of the vekut, expanded consciousness, where we're trying to reach out to this. We, we call it the organus, which is the hidden light that we're all trying to get to. All joys that we're trying to achieve is really coming from the organus. And when we do this, it is a form of prayer. You know, like David Amelech, it's Tehillim was known, he was a musician who sang his prayers. And this was, this was considered tefillah, which is like Torah learning. You know, we say when we finish Tehillim, we say it in the, in the end, we say it's like the Book of Gracious, the Book of Shemos, you know, we say. And through this, you know, we get to this achievement of the Vekut. So, um, let's, can, can we have a, an example of a Nigun? Would, would you be able to give us an example of a Nigun? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been playing this, I wrote this, uh, I think, maybe two years ago. Right. And another thing I'd like to mention about a Nigun is, just like a certain smell can sometimes remind you of something from yeah. the past, a nigun can sometimes also, I'm not saying that you're envisioning like a prophet envisions it, but it can also bring you into a place of a vision where you feel this nigun comes from. And this is a nigun I've played many times in Tzfat with the Hebra. I've been playing this today and I felt like I'd reawoken because the way I envisioned this nigun, it was, I, when I first, Hashem, I would say, gave me this nigun, I imagined, when I did close my eyes, the smell and the vision I did get was when David Amel would go out to war. Mm -hmm. It was like a war chant. Oh. And um, there were different parts that came later, because sometimes a nigun doesn't come all at once. And it started like this, you know. Truth is, it started from the second part was the first part, but I used the part that came later to start from the beginning. So it's called Shvagad David, I call it the roar of David. You know, 
but um, you can call it whatever you like. So. First time I've heard it, you know, it's like a, it's like remembering a tune. Almost. Yep, that's exactly. It's like a smell that you remember, and it's like, it's uh, it's such. It's not just like when David went out to war with his enemies. It's the war of the obstacles. Mm. It's the we need a. If you watch a movie, for example, the real thriller of the movie is the music behind the scenes. You know, if there's a scary part. And they don't That's make right. like do 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 do. That's it's right. not so scary. It's, it's like so the music behind the scenes. Yeah. So, Rabbi Nachman used to mention himself. If you'd only hear the song and dance behind my Taurus, you know. It, so there's really a whole musical behind us, and just from the mechitzas of this world, we're just not hearing it. But the more we channel into it, the more we can access that nigun, mm. which is constantly happening. What would you say is the difference between a nigun and a song? A song, so, I mean, a song is many kinds, Baruch Hashem, there's many kinds of songs. We haven't reached the eighth note yet, which we don't even, can't even grasp what that means, but a song is, you're talking about the blues. The blues is a way of expressing stories and pain and mm. joy and making it through the day. You know, and you have today, the way I see the, the musical industry, how it went from it went from the 60s, which was this peace and love era of music, and then it went to the 80s, which was angry. A lot of mm. people were angry. It mm. went from peace to love to like the opposite. Right. And then in the 90s, it got even more angry. But if you look at now getting closer to the gula, if you listen to the music that's around the world, it's more emotional. Mm. It's more between this, this uh, Indian of Nukva, you know, this masculine and feminine aspect. It's always these love songs where people are expressing their brokenness, their far away, all the country songs, all the pop songs. It's always about being separated from this. The truth is deep inside the Indian of Shechina, but we can see where the Shechina is holding in the world through the music, you know, which was lost at Bava. You know, mm. we had to hang our harps. Mm. The music was lost. All the songs we're hearing is originally from the sparks of the temple. You know. So, um... Nikun is a kind of meditative prayer, would you say? Yeah, 
You can see that anyone, even if you don't have a refined voice, you can always join the voices of many because the voices of harmonies will elevate your voice. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way of peace and love because anyone can show up to a music circle and join the music. His voice, even if it's not a beautiful voice, will be elevated through the combination of hundreds or thousands of, of voices that come together. It, is, it, it, it is a unity, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so um, let us imagine that someone in our audience um, would really like to uh, learn or to uh, create a nigun. How would they go about composing? How do you go about composing a nigun? So, I've been playing music for as long as I'm playing music, I've always told people that have asked me sometimes to write songs is I don't know how to do that. Mm. You know, there's a lot of music musicians out there that get called up to write a song for a project. In two days they can write a song. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and sometimes it takes me 15 years to finish a song. Wow. Sometimes this something comes right away. I have to it, like humbly admit that it's mamish from Hashem when it comes. I'm not, uh, I wouldn't call myself a writer or a poet, but when it comes, it's a place of surrender. It's mm. like when your prayer is coming smoothly out of your mouth mm. and you just, the words are coming out and they're just flowing like, like Shifri mm. Kamayim Kilev, you know, mm. my, my heart's pouring out like water. This, this is the union of music, when the music can flow and the chords of the song can create a vessel mm. for those words to enter, mm. which is another deep thing is important to understand the musicians to learn different positions how to how to shape the chords because I've always felt that the chords are vessels for the words that are that are waiting mm. which are the prayers to come down into these places so first you do the the tune part and then you you allow the words to flow into it is that is that what I happens? mean I would say if you're talking about a ningun it's it would be more like a high you know but if I would put it all in short, it's a place of surrender and the vekut. It's a place where you can, where it says the prophets would only really prophesy when they were, when they were in joy. Mm -hmm. You can't receive prophecy. Mm -hmm. There's an union of receiving prophecy from the other side, like Bilam. Mm -hmm. You know, we can learn from his name, Bet, which is the first letter of the Torah. You know, Ayin, the 70 faces of the Torah. Lamed is the last letter of the Torah. Mem is the 40 days of the Torah's birth. You can see that he had this cloth of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Like Moshe, but in the Sitter Acher, he got it from the other side. Right. So obviously, we, there is a music. If you learn Torah Gimel and the Kuti Maran, you can, he speaks about music that can harm an, an individual. But he speaks about Talmud Bavli, which is very connected to Al Nard Bavel. We can discuss it. It's a, it's a whole very deep union of. Yudzayim Thomas, Yerushalayim, connected to the, to, the, to the mind and the heart. So in this Indian, when a person is able to calm himself with joy, now I don't mean joy like he's happy and laughing, because mm -hmm. a broken heart can also lead to joy. Mm -hmm. And we're not chas v'shom talking about atzvut or depression. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a lev nishbar. A lev nishbar is when a child is far away from Ima, far away from Abba, is crying to come home. And this, is the, this was David Amel, he had a lev nishbar, and through this, comes joy, and through this comes music. Which is important, I would tell a, someone who does want to write nigunim is, first of all, a nigun can come to you without a guitar. You know, there's a lot of tzaddikim that wrote nigunim, they didn't play instruments. Mm -hmm. But today, it's very simple, you know, all you need to do is play a simple chord, and you can just repeat it, you know. Just go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
it, let the nigan carry your voice, let the nigan carry your heart. That's beautiful. You know? How many quotes is that? It's like two, two or three. I'm just, I'm going like the ladder. I, I start, it's like the ladder of Yaakov. I start from, I just go into, in this position, I guess, a B. I, I don't know the names of the chords or any theory. I've wow. used my ear, so whatever this is called, it's some kind of B. <laughs> And then I would start from this chord. I'm going up the ladder. And the third part will take me in wherever it takes me in. It's a whole new note. You didn't know this name was actually came by Darizal. This specific nigga, yeah. The nigga came to you from yeah. When you had that reason, walking up without a guitar, uh -huh. and I quickly ran into somebody. Told I went down to the reason of Shabbos <laughs> that they were making it. And it was like very packed, mm -hmm. and instead of going back up, I said, you know, I didn't come down here for nothing. Mm -hmm. Let me go do maybe a tikkun kali by the kavari. And then when I when the truth is, somebody told me to write a nigga for Ani Bekoach who he has this Indian of doing it seven times, I said, I, I said, I don't know how to write a nigga, and it has, like what I explained before, it needs to come. He said, it will come. So I went to the Ari, and the way up, it <coughs> came. So we, we added, <coughs> Kabbalistically, there's an Indian to do each Pasuk seven times. I don't know the source of it, but uh, I'm sure it's there. So it seems to me like you, you, you you get a chord and you, you, you take it to a, um, a sister chord and then you go back to the first chord and then the sister chord again. Is, is, it, is it like that? Is that kind of the, the, the dance, the method? It depends what the nigun is, but I personally, <coughs> the way a lot of times <coughs> when I write a nigun, first of all, it's very important if someone, I think every single person in the world can write nigunin. And what's important is to always have a recorder with you because a nigun is like a dream. Ah. It can come to you and you can forget it very quickly. Right. And when it comes to you, it's Hashem giving you this beautiful nigun. Right. So today we have technology. Record it on your phone, mm -hmm. grab a little thing, and later at night when you're home, play the nigun and just meditate on it. Expand it, let it carry you away till the next chelik that mm -hmm. Hashem is waiting to give you comes. Like I said, sometimes they can come in parts. Sometimes the, f the second part comes first. Mm. Why? I don't know. But this is a, a gift from Hashem. It's something we draw down. We don't write it. We draw it down. From oil you and know. Are there any, like, a favorite chord that, that you, you go to chord when you don't know what to do? You just want to try something? Is there yeah, a... so I'm saying is what I personally like to do is when I write a nigun, I like to create the melody for it. So there's a nigun called nigun malachim. It was called nigun malachim, and later I, I added the words anil dodi from Shir Hashirim. It kind of goes like this. I hope I'm in the right key. Um, singing it, I always forget, because uh, the thing with nigunim, you always have low parts and high parts. Right. right. So sometimes Hashem gives you the gift of a refined voice which is able to reach all these places with Yeshiva Das. <laughs> right. And sometimes you just feel stuck. So again, it's another Indian, a very important thing to discuss about how to refine your voice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with Talmud Bavli, connected to your time with Thomas. And any person can personally reach this level of a refined voice because mm -hmm. it's taught how. But for example, I would take a melody
again, let it take you up. Let it take you on the ladder. Because, you know, and especially since tefillah and igunim <clears throat> prophecy, and where does all the tefillah go? It goes to Kodesh Kadashim. You know, it's Kinesis HaTfilah, and that's where Yaakov had the dream of the ladder. Mm. This is all music. Mm. It's all music. Tell me more about this ladder idea, this idea of, of you, you're building a ladder when, you, when you're writing a new book. What does, that mean? what does that actually mean, building a ladder? And, and how, do we, how do we create our ladder? There's a few places. I think it's very important <clears throat> to learn the Torahs and the Kuti Maran. Let's speak about music. It's the Fla. Which one are they again? Remind I remember Torah Gimel, very important. It's how to be protected and elevate music. Uh, Torah Nun He speaks about what we were speaking about when Shaul became depressed. Mm-hmm. And he he's, lost his work. What did he ask for? He asked for a musician. And they brought David Amar mm-hmm. to play music for him. Because mm-hmm. he lost his Indian of prophecy. It says mm-hmm. he fell into a, into a Hosha. And there's a Torah called the Reish Bay Base. And that is a very important Torah for any individual who wants to play music. Because the whole Inyan of Reish Bay Base, what Rabbi Nachman teaches in this specific Torah, is the Inyan of Nekuda Tova, of a person to see the good in everyone, even himself. Not Chas V'Shalom to say bad is good. But to find the good that's in a person, even if he's a Russian, you can't say he didn't do anything good in himself. You can't say he didn't give tzedakah one time. And imagine you're in, you're in a field full of thorns, and everything is dead, but there's only one beautiful rose growing, and it's shining. And it, but it's in a huge field of thorns. If you only focus on that rose, mm-hmm. then that's all you see is that rose. The thorns, maybe in the side you can see some thorns, but really, all you see is the rose. Al mm-hmm. right? Then that whole world becomes that rose. And in that person, in that Nikuda Tova, that person's a tzaddik. You can't take them away. Mm-hmm. That person's a tzaddik. Mm-hmm. So we have to do this within ourselves and with the people around us. And what's really happening spiritually is that we are all an orchestra of the divine. You are a string of the divine, I am a string of the divine. If, chas v'shalem, I play your note by judging you favorably, then I can go. Imagine this happens. You hear that? (laughs) Did that belong there? No. (laughs) That was me judging you on a very bad note. That was me, like, looking down at you, speaking Lashon Hara about you, feeling jealous about you. Not judging you on the scale of merit. Right. Now, if I, because I'm judging you favorably, yeah. which God wants us to do, God loves all his children. He wants us to judge each other favorably. And I have to know how to play, go up and down the ladder, which is the notes. And the musician has to know how to play. Now, when he's speaking about the musician, it doesn't mean a guy like me who knows how to play guitar. It means the way we see ourselves. Because any person you meet in your life, and any kind of mishpat you do on him, which is Indian of judgment, you're causing Rosh Hashanah on this person. Mm. And you're playing his musical notes. And chas v'shalem, if you judge him in a, in a, in a, in a, in a stage of ra, then, oh, so it's then hitting, you're hitting a wrong note, and you're taking what happens if you're in an orchestra and one person goes off the note. Right. It, the everyone feels goes. it. So, you, so by judging another person, you're interfering with the harmony of his tune to Hashem. And it takes everyone off. Because when I'm in a band and the drummer goes off, which is the pulse, it's a whole different thing, which is the taking quality. It's the 10 pulses that have to be evenly. Now, if I go off tune, my whole band's gonna be like, everyone in the crowd is gonna start like, yo. <laughs> I'm taking everyone out of the Devekut. Because the power of the musician, <clears throat> he, has a ch- he has the power to change the <clears throat> mood of the listener. Now, if I hit a wrong note, then your mood changes. Your mood starts suddenly mm-hmm. forget, like, right? Yeah. That didn't belong there. You're, yeah. Suddenly, you came out of the Devekut. Right. And from that place, Hashem, which is the place of peace and unity, is a place where there's unity, that's where Hashem resides himself. Right. A place, someone who's haughty, Hashem removes himself. Why? Because I'm trying to be bigger or better. Chas so the whole union of an orchestra is that we're playing together. 
Mm -hmm. I have this part, you have your part. Mm -hmm. We all have this netzot, this puzzle of the Meshicha, of the Gula, that we're all playing. We are all strings of the Divine Orchestra, right. every single one of us. So, we all know that music can change our moods. Um, can you give us an example of, um, you know, where you have seen the world change as a result of either your music or somebody else's music? I mean, personally, my music, I don't think, made it far out of Tzvah. Um, I think I'm, my music stayed in the city. Most of the music I've personally written is written in Tzvah. It's not called Nagunim of Tzvah. Um, but if you're talking about like, like someone like Rav Shlomo, and I must add from this Torah, Reish Pei Beis, he says, the Ferish, one who's able to see the good in every single Jew can write music, can play music. Mm. He says it the Ferish, you can read it. It's Torah 282 in the Kuti Maran. Mm. And again, he's teaching every single person how to do this. Mm. You know, so nobody has an excuse to say, oh, I don't know how to play, I don't know how to do this. No, there's an Eitzah. You know, you can fulfill it, it's a recipe. And every single person can achieve this. Every single person has nigunim and prophecy and tefillah. You know. So you're, 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 you're guaranteeing for us. That <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm, quoting, I'm quoting from the... From the, the all we have to do is, yeah. is have a, a good eye on others and then that will allow us to write music? Again, we shouldn't say that bad is good. So make a mistake some people have in the store that says you should judge every person righteously. You shouldn't say, ah, you're doing... He's saying you should find the good that's hidden within the bad. This person, he's, 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 he's a bully, he's evil, he's, but he gives tzedakah every day. Focus on that. He says, just by focusing on this person's Nakuda Tova, you can make, you, you basically you're watering this flower, this mm -hmm. little flower that he has covered in his thorns, mm -hmm. which is his sins mm -hmm. and his bad deeds. You pour water in it, and suddenly another flower pops out. Mm -hmm. And you make it blossom until these beautiful flowers cover all these thorns, and you can mamish bring him to the scale of merit, where he's a complete. Would subject. you say that Shlomo Karabakh was the sort of the epitome of uh, the a master of nigun? He has to be. The, my his nigunim is pure ruha kodesh, and we can see that one of the kudas he has was he did love every single Jew. Everyone can say this about him. It's one of his midot was he loved every single yid. Mm -hmm. And you can see that he was able to draw down Nigun Ruch HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to also add on to that is he wasn't such a great guitar player. No. If you watch him play, mm -hmm. he didn't or, know how to or, keep or, a strum. He had a great voice. You know, he didn't know how to keep a strum. Yeah. He didn't know, I'm not saying his <laughs> voice was in the... But his voice was more beautiful than any voice, his Nigunim, because it had Chaim. I had chen, I had kavod you know, and it was it was nagunim ruach kodesh, and I 100% believe that this came from Reish Bebez, mm -hmm. that he makayim the store of the gamer, that he was able to mamish look at every single look at you, and no matter who you are, just like find that flower inside of you, and he and he would just make it blossom, and that's why he was able to make so so much choser b'tshuva. Can you, can you share with us an incident that affected you as a result of hearing a nigun? Like Rab Shlomo? Anybody's. I mean, the first time I heard Rab Shlomo, like, I always heard Rab Shlomo in the background, but the first time I got the essence was, I was in Shabbos, Hanukkah, and Uman. It was a heavy snow, and that whole, I feel like that, that time Rabbi Nachman gave me a gift, he gives you presents when you come, he gave me, like, Rab Shlomo. And I was, I was, if you remember Moshe Geller, mm -hmm. I met, he was like my roommate, he was just telling me stories, and the whole, this other friend of mine, a Cohen, but when I was leaving Uman, it was like heavy snow, I was on the bus, and somebody put these, this, and back there was an iPod, and I started hearing him say stories, and then Mamish, Mamish opened up my heart, you know, it brought me to tears, it brought me to the Vekut, and I, and I started hearing, uh, music coming from a whole different place. I grew up listening to music, professional, famous artists, top of the line, but here's a guy who's simply strumming a guitar, and anyone yeah. can do it. Yeah. You know, beautiful chazan voice, you know, but the penetration that it did was beyond. Mm -hmm. it, did, it did give me an aura of and 
it changed the whole Indian of what where music comes from. It, it gave me a lave, a lave nishbar, which leads to joy, and, and teaches you this Indian of prophecy. Mm. You know? Talk about a little bit more about this lev nishbar because it seems as if it's something that is negative, but it, it, it's <clears throat> the source of so much positive. This broken heart, this idea of broken heart. Well, if you Dabru Alevi Yerushalayim, right? It says that David Melech would wake up at midnight. He knew when midnight was. Even Moshe didn't know. David Melech knew when I was because a northern wind would play on his harp. It was the music that knew exactly when Chatzos Lila is. And that's when Rachel Amenu can come out and express herself. That's when it's, Hashem goes into Gan Eden and he sits and plays and sings with the tzaddikim. It's a very sweet hour. And I can understand why somebody would want to know when that is. Mm -hmm. But a mouth mattered it to know exactly when that is because the northern wind, the place where they say evil comes from, which will be good in the end, is going to be a tremendous, the Zohar speaks about, it's going to be a tremendous menahapahu, it's going to be a mamish place of tov. From this place itself, the wind would come play on his harp and he would awaken and he would sing music. Now, what does it mean when you wake up Chatzos? What are you mourning over? Morning, we're mourning over the temple, but what is the temple? If you speak to me in reality, mm -hmm. I would say the temple was a, was a beautiful building in Jerusalem. Am I really crying over this destruction of the house? It, what is my real destruction? What is my real tsar? What is my real pain? It's a destruction of myself. <coughs> the Chuban Yishalayim is here. These are the walls of Jerusalem that surround my mind. Once I let the chametz, once I let anything breach the walls around my mind, then it can enter the temple and destroy the temple. That is Chorban Yerushalayim. That is Yud Zayin Batamis, Yom Yerushalayim Chabataneh. The Indian of Yud Zayin Batamis, what happened? It says, Shichacha came into the world. It says, Moshe broke the Luchas, and we lost one of the crowns, which was a crown of like, Indian of memory. And then, also, it says in the Gemara, when it was Das, it's like the Beis Amigdash was built in this day. So the whole Chorban Beis Amigdash is connected to Das, which is knowledge. And this is where they hung their harps. Why were they hanging their harps? Because they didn't want to share this music. They didn't want it to spill over into the other side, which is where all the music we hear come today. It says the music did spill into the other side. So, uh, so it's same thing. All the music that we hear today is from the other side? It's from the temple. This from sparks the of the temple, yeah. There's a source for it that I remember learning. I, I wish I could remember where it says that all in the holy nagunim that we, that we hear around the world, it's not so it, it's sure it's just from the temple. Right. And that's why in Torah Gimel he teaches you how to elevate the music of the wicked. He says not to listen to it, but if you do a certain tikkun, which is he says learning Talmud at night, which connected to Bavlis, where they hung their harps on Nars Babel, they hung our harps on the willow. And the willow, is, is Rabbi Nachman says, is the, is the plant, the tefillah that you didn't do with, with das goes into the willow tree. The prayers that you didn't do with concentration goes into the willow tree. So this is the music that comes without, that falls on the other side where the prophecy is blemished. So if a person wants the mamish come to Nebuah's based on Migdash, he has to rebuild the temple. And that has to be right here. When we're mourning, over the destruction of the temple, warning over the, over the shattering of our own hearts. Mm -hmm. Because the, the Kodesh Kadashim is the heart. Mm -hmm. My mind is, 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 is Jerusalem. The walls around my mind protect me from the, from the Machshavas Chatzonius. And Gutemran, he calls it kosher animals and not kosher animals. A person has to be very careful not to let non kosher animals into his mind, which is what do they do? They send in a pig mm -hmm. through the wall. That's when the whole destruction started. If you right. read the Tanakh, Instead of sending in a sheep, they send in a pig. And this, and this was already the beginning of the Tuma, because once you let in the chametz through the mine, that's breaching the walls of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And once they get in, they can burn down the temple, which is the heart. Mm -hmm. And then music gets lost, because now I take my harp and I hang it under the willow tree. Mm -hmm. So rebuilding the temple is protecting, is, is keeping the borders around the mine and only sending in sheep and not Talking about sheep, you, you, uh, you, you surprised me last year when you uh, announced that you were uh, 
becoming a farmer and, uh, and uh, raising sheep and goods. What's, what's, uh, what's that like, been like for you? And what have you learned about that? I mean, the, whole, the Indian itself, raising sheep and not goats right now. Goats were the little troublemakers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I had goats, I had sheep. Now I only have sheep. Sheep are like Hasidim, you know. They're like Hasidim. They come out for the kugel, and um, you know, they kind of like, they kind of like go where the where the kugel is. And but um, nah, there's a lot to it. But um, personally, what I do is I raise them in, in the fields. And I always had a personal problem. I, would, I, would, I can share a lot of things about it. One of the things is that. I can I get bored easily, so when I try to do his boat or this in the forest, this I sometimes fall asleep. Yeah. I start losing track of mind. But there's an Indian of responsibility when you're when you when you are shepherding animals right. and you're in the field. You have a you have a task of responsibility. You have to watch your animals. So your mind's always awake. So you can't fall asleep. So it's a it's a beautiful way to always pray. You can always pray to Hashem. And and spoilers play music. And Were you inspired to uh, uh, to create something as a result of you being in the in the fields with the sheep? Yeah, there's there's a Torah in Kutimran, Sam Rimu, in the second part of Kutimran, where he talks about shepherding and music. Mm. I have to be honest; it's a hard for me to understand this Torah fully, mm. and there's no tefillah in this Torah. But Rav Nassan made a tefillah on every mm -hmm. Torah, and I haven't found a tefillah on it. <clears throat> he speaks about how the, the shepherd needs to be, first of all, shepherd needs to make sure that he's shepherding the sheep and they're not shepherding him. Mm -hmm. And that the music comes through the grasses that they eat, and then he takes them to a new field, and then the, he gets a new song through that new field that mm -hmm. they eat. Nice. And he speaks about this and about what he sent the Shvatim down to Yosef. He sent them with the, with the song of the land of Israel. Um, it's, to be honest with me, some Torahs of Rabbi Nachman are very deep. And I didn't grasp anything. And I hope to go more in in it and get more information. But it's um, the whole union of you being the shepherd and them not being your shepherd. Mm is when you're able to have this place of Yeshiva Das in the field where your sheep are herding and they feel safe. Mm. Then you can sit down and, and you can play music to Hashem and you can talk to Hashem. And there is a very special Indian you know, of this and they also love music. You know, there are different breeds of sheep, some yeah. love it more than others. But um, So we have time just for one more tune. So would you, would you uh, thrill us with an, an, another we could, if you want to play like a Shlomo tune, yeah. you can do a, a happy Shlomo tune. And I, I always like to play the melody, so it goes like this. Thank you. 
Laser. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you so much for entertaining my crazy idea. <laughs> and uh, I, I learned a huge amount of Torah, and I, and I, um, I would love to learn some of those uh, uh, Likutu Morans. I think uh, we must. Related yeah. to the music. I, I, I remember when we, when, we, when I first came to Sfat, I was uh, inspired to ask uh, Afshi Weingart to teach us about music and uh, we never got around to it but I, I always felt that there was some magical Torah there to be learned um, and, uh, and I, I look forward to be able to learning those Torahs and hopefully at the Al Sheikh Academy we'll be able to share that with the rest of the world. Zerat Hashem, Mamish, it's so important and it's such a gift that we have these Torahs and it's for every single person. Every single person can fulfill these eights. I, I call them recipes, right. like recipes. You, you put this together, you get this. You do this eitza that the tzaddik tells you, you do this eitza, and, and you come to this result that he tells you you can reach. You know, if I can remind the Torah Gimel, Torah Nun He, um, Torah Resh Pei Bei, some Amish, and if someone can learn Torah Sam of Gimel in the second book, explain to me where, where what he means by that, I would be so happy to hear some Please feedback God. on that. Please God. Let's, let's try uh, to uh, organize that. <laughs> let's do it. Thank you so much. Thank you.